Okay, so uh, welcome to the shop. Yesterday I teased most of you on this little car that I'm about ready to drive. It is a 1987 Suzuki Alto Works, very rare. This one is in a bit of a, a rally mode with its studless tires, four wheel drive, and turbocharged engine. And uh, we're gonna bring it in the shop and do an inspection here. It's been sold and I'm doing a post purchase inspection. Very rare, very unique car. So let's um, let's kill the suspense and just show you what it's like. First off, we're treated to um, mid 80s type interior. We've got velour pink inserts. Ooh, it feels really nice. It's very soft. I, I don't know if it's faded red. It looks like it originally was pink, but it is embroidered in the seat full-time four-wheel drive. It's got a sporty RS steering wheel, a boost gauge, and a few other accoutrements. Now, I'm a pretty, I'm not a super big guy, but I have a hard time getting my long legs. I gotta put my leg in first to enter this car. That's how tight the, the clearance is between the steering wheel and the seat. It needs a flat bottom wheel. Um, so again, this is an 87. It's a very old car, but can you imagine this thing in 1987? That was the, how should I say it? Heyday for hot hatches. You know, the Volkswagen Rabbit, which was a GTI and other hot hatches um, were all competing. So we've got a five speed transmission here. And it is, uh, of course, right-hand drive. What dates this car is like the old clock and the old radio. Otherwise, it looks more modern. So I'm going to turn the key here. It is fuel-injected, so it should fire up, pushed in the clutch. Turn the key. Let's see what happens here. What lights up? Oil pressure and the battery. Light. Fires right up. Has a three-cylinder sound to it. The boost gauge is working. And it's vacuum right now, so there's a little gas. It's idling about 2,000 RPM. I'm going to put it in gear. Very notchy shifter. And uh, cable clutch, I can tell that already. Bring it in the shop, check it out. I can feel the four wheel drive. It's, you know, when you, the wheels turn, you can kind of feel the drag a little bit. Possible the tires are low on air, but let's get this thing in here. And wow, it's really a small car. Um, the emergency brake is not supposed to be working, but it seems like it is. So we're gonna shut this thing off. And, oh, it doesn't have any door dinger. I thought it would have a door buzz. It does not. Let's get it up in the air. Oh boy, my big old boots don't fit in there very well. Let's take a look at this thing under the lights here. I love the spoiler. The air can just flow right through there. This car is inspired by rally racing from the, uh, the mid 80s Suzuki. It looks like, um, what it, like Geo Metro or early turbo sprint type taillights, but not quite. But that's the, that's, that's the vibe I get from that. The bodywork in gold, it's a little faded in some spots. Pretty neat. Really cool little car. So let's get this thing up in the air and we'll look at it from the underside. Functional hood scoop just <laughs> looks like it's an add on, but it's not. There are a few things with this car that I didn't notice before. There's some duct tape over the corners of the windshield. The windshield is cracked. Right there, you can see that. It's got a spider crack. Looks like the paint got buffed a little too much right there, or something. Has the uh, old fashioned radio antenna that you pull up to get better stations. Also has Alto Works um, wind deflectors. Pretty neat. It does have a, a rear windshield washer, but no wiper appears to have an aftermarket exhaust has some type of a main factory 
and what that is. So let's get it up in the air. Let's look at the underside, and we'll go from there. Just do an inspection on this thing. Let's see what the guy's getting. All right, so we're taking a clo close examination of our little Suzuki here, and I thought we'd start off with the engine compartment first. Uh, I did this yesterday on another video, but uh, you can never have enough video of this cute little car. So what do we got here? We got a 660 cc three-cylinder engine with dual overhead cams, and you can see it's canted. Uh, it's kind of laid down in here a little bit like a sport bike. The turbocharger is right down there, right behind the grill, which I think it's actually down in here. The, the hot side is right behind the bumper. I mean, it is packed in there. There's no room for the radiator there. The radiator is next to it. It's half size. Um, we've got the turbo, which produces uh, compressed air up through this pipe around here into the intercooler, out of the intercooler, and into the throttle body. And of course, the exhaust goes down. So we've got double overhead cams. Uh, timing belt on this is probably pretty tight. Timing belt looks like it's been changed. It's right behind this cover. It just blows my mind at all the engineering that is crammed into this tiny little engine bay. I mean, that's my elbow and my fingertips. So that's probably two feet by three feet to pack a five-speed transmission, all-wheel drive, turbo, intercooler, a double overhead cam engine, fuel injection, the work, and air conditioning. Uh, I see that this car does have air conditioning. I didn't think it did. That is crazy. The battery is even micro-sized to get everything. There's just no extra space anywhere. That's amazing. I'm, I'm truly in awe. But I'm happy to work on this car. So we're going to uh, now basically focus our view away from the engine compartment and go to the underneath side. And I'm sure you're going to be in awe of what the underside looks like as well. I'm, I've never seen one on the underside, so I'm curious. I love this thing. It's such a cool little car. And up she goes. sticker on the side says teamwork of enthusiastic Suzuki engineers is certainly worthy of the name works hence Suzuki Alto works okay so let's take a good look at this thing we'll start from the back and go forward one thing that stands out is no independent rear suspension it has a normal differential with axles a solid rear axle I was not expecting that at all for such a compact car, that's amazing. And it's got something here. This is your pinion and your differential, but this is some type of a locking diff, or I don't know. It must have a clutch pack in there. I, I'm gonna be in awe here. I might be speechless. It's got a double universal joint because probably Oh, it's got a double double, so there's a double here and a double there. It's two piece. Oh yeah, so it goes up. I see how they, they engineered that. To get the driveline angles right, they had to do double double. The exhaust system is unique too. We've got a dual tip muffler, which goes up and over the axle, goes into a resonator, feels very solid, and then to a catalytic converter, which is huge. And it all looks original. Pretty good sized pipe. That's Two and a half inch exhaust pipe on a 660 cc motor. Let's see what we got here. A little sump. It looks like a blow tube or a draft tube of some type. Rack and pinion steering is manual, no power assist. We've got front disc brakes that are solid, not vented. Little tiny, teeny calipers. Uh, and a cable. Operated clutch, which I suspected. A little bit of oil weepage there. And we must have a transfer case. Where is the transfer case? Okay, here's a differential, which is just really tight. And the transfer case is up in that hole there. It kind of comes through the, uh, the tunnel. Wow, what an engineering package. We do have some rotten bushings here. Those don't look so great. It is an older car. It looks like... Oh, the CD boots are in good shape. 
couple of rotten bushings here, a new tie rod there. What a great car. It's got, uh, oh, it's got a, like a radius rod that's used by the, it doesn't, have a it doesn't have a control arms, but the control arms aren't held laterally. They're held by the um, sway bar as like a radius rod, similar to Honda N600s of the day. That's pretty different. What happens is if these bushings get sloppy, then your wheels start to wobble. And I don't really like that, um, but I guess that's what they did on this car. Very interesting. There's just not a lot here. We've got a gas tank, a muffler, and a differential. There's just not a lot of room. We have drum brakes, right? Yeah, we do have drum brakes in the rear. I would have thought they would have been discs, but in 1987, there's no room for a spare tire or anything. Here's a hook, just coil springs on a solid rear axle. That blows me away. That's old technology, but this is an older car. No rust, really neat. What a fun little ride. Speaking of a ride, I should take this in for a drive. But I think I'm going to hold off and leave you in suspense till the next video. What do you think about that?